topic is entitled Strategic Inflection Points. And I named it that because years ago, I spoke to a group in Chandler. And to prepare for the talk, I read a book by the former president and CEO of Intel, Andrew Grove. And in his book, Only the Paranoid Survive, <laughs> <laughs> he stressed the importance of uh, focusing on strategic inflection points. He defined strategic inflection points as a time in the life of business when the fundamentals are about to change. That change can mean an opportunity to rise to new heights, but it just may as likely signal the beginning of the end. He taught his employees to focus their awareness on strategic inflection points because they're important signals let's say, turning points. So today I'd like to take the same concept that Andrew Grove applied to business and expand it to a bigger picture. What if the universe has its own strategic inflection points? What if the universe provides indicators, turning points, that suggest that the fundamentals of life are about to change? And what if it's up to us to pay attention. Like Andrew Grove says, the strategic inflection point is the time to wake up and listen. Who here, like me, has been researching all the buzz related to all the events happening this month? <laughs> um, it's remarkable, really. The timing of such significant events lining up to take place right here right now on planet Earth. I should warn you, though, there is a lot of fear mongering out there. Some are predicting the worst stock market crash of all time. <clears throat> Others are predicting the start of World War III. Fundamental Christians worry that this month marks the beginning of the seven tribulation years prophesied in the Bible. For those of you who've heard me speak before, you know that I am not about doom and gloom. In fact, I'm a silver lining type of person. Although optimistic, I do try to stay consciously aware, and discernment is important to me. As Andrew Grove points out, all together too often, people substitute opinions for facts and emotions for analysis. So my goal today is to present this information as accurately as possible and let you decide for yourself what you want to think about it all. There's three events that I'm going to bring to your attention. First, the year of Jubilee. Second, CERN's Large Hadron Collider. And finally, we'll end with the super blood moon, which you'll, we'll all be able to witness tonight in our own Phoenix sky. So let's discuss the year of ju Jubilee, which according to the Hebrew calendar, started four days ago. To understand the Jubilee year, we first have to discuss the Shemitah. The Hebrew people count and observe seven year cycles. Every cycle ends with a sabbatical year known as the Shemitah, because Shemitah in Hebrew means to release. During the sabbatical year, according to the Bible, the land shall lie fallow, and all debts shall be relinquished. The Shemitah, however, is shrouded in mystery. The rise and fall of stock markets, the rise of nations, and the fall of powers, the timing of world wars, even 9-11 and the 2008 stock market crash have all been linked to this seven-year cycle. Author Jonathan Kahn demonstrated that almost all the major U.S. financial crashes in U.S. history are closely tied to the seven-year pattern. He showed that on September um, 17, 2001, at the end of that Shemitah year, the Dow fell an astounding 684 points, and it was a record that held for precisely seven years until the end of the next Shemitah year. At the end of the next Shemitah year, 2008, another horrifying stock market crash took place. On September 29, 2008, some of you will remember that the Dow plummeted 
777 points, which still today remains the greatest one-day stock market crash of all time. So on the very last day, of the last two Shemitah cycles, the stock market crashed so badly that it set brand new all-time records. The Shemitah year this time ended on September 13th. So, are you wondering what happened to the stock market that day? <laughs> well, it was Sunday, so the stock market was closed. But for the remainder of this month, the market has recorded standard seasonal volatility. There's more to the Shemitah this year, though, because in 2015, the Shemitah is exceptional because it marks the 70th Jubilee. According to the Jewish calendar, the Jubilee occurs every 50, 50 years after a 49-year 49 49 cycle, seven cycles of seven years each. So September 23rd marked the beginning of the year of Jubilee. Like the Shemitah, it's another year of rest following the sabbatical year. And many people are speculating what's going to happen with this Jubilee year. Because in the past, the Jubilee year has been known to usher in great celebrations. But it's also been known to uh, offer ominous foreshadows about the next cycle ahead. So for this next topic, I might need to put on my tinfoil hat. <laughs> I just had to do that. <laughs> so, who here besides me has researched CERN? Okay. <laughs> no wonder I brought my tinfoil hat. <laughs> CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, located near Geneva, Switzerland. CERN hosts the largest hadron collider, which is LHC for short in the world. So what is a Hadron Collider? Well, it is the <coughs> largest, most powerful particle accelerator, or if you like, atom smasher. And it lies 300 feet below Earth's surface and spans 17 circular miles. So through it, subatomic particles are fired in opposite directions. And with the help of magnets, get this, 100,000 times stronger than the gravitational force of Earth, these particles collide at nearly the speed of light. <clears throat> so why, you might be asking, is CERN doing this? <laughs> well, they've spent over $10 billion, and there's 5,000 physicists who've worked over 16 years so that the Hadron Collider can replicate the Big Bang Theory. In 2012, the LHC discovered the Higgs boson, also known as the God particle. And since then, they've been developing new theories and are pursuing new research, including areas like dark matter, supermatter, time travel, other dimensions, string theory, and parallel <coughs> universes. In June of this year, they began running the Hadron Collider at 13 TeV which is the highest level energy they've ever tried, almost twice as much as ever before. And starting now, this month, CERN aims to gradually increase the number of collisions, thus increasing the intensity of the proton beam. Some world-renowned scientists have issued warnings. Stephen Hawking wrote, the elusive God particle discovered by scientists in 2012 has the potential to destroy the universe. The Cambridge mathematics professor went on to say, at very high energy levels, the Higgs boson could cause space and time to suddenly collapse. However, he did add sarcastically that such an event is unlikely in the near future. And he explains why. A particle accelerator that reaches 100 billion giga electron volts would be larger than Earth, and is unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. <laughs> Ironically, a large statue of the Hindu god Shiva, the destroyer, is located outside the front lobby of CERN. 
This statue depicts Shiva amidst the cosmic dance of destruction and recreation. <clears throat> In Hindu terms, Shiva performs the divine dance to destroy a weary universe and make way for the god Brahma to start the process of creation all over again. Shiva has therefore been compared to the Hadron Collider, which destroys atoms by smashing them together. So many people are concerned about this organization. Get it? Concern? <laughs> <laughs> um, they fear that their risky experiments could not only open doors to higher dimensions, but perhaps lower dimensions too. Some researchers refer to the prophecy that the gates of hell will be opened and demons will, free, be, will be free to roam Earth. The director of research in science computing, Sergio Bertolucci, once commented, something may come through dimensional doors at LHC. And he also said, out of this door might come something or we might send something through it. CERN's advancements are undeniable. CERN was one of the main inspirations behind the UN declaring 2015 the International Year of Light, which is a global initiative to raise awareness of how light-based technology provides solutions to worldwide challenges. So now let's focus on the super blood moon, which to me seems to be the exclamation point on a bold series of turning points that have been highlighted this month. The supermoon lunar eclipse that is occurring tonight promises to be spectacular, or should we say spectacular, since we're getting close to Halloween. During a supermoon, the moon appears to be 14% larger and 30% brighter. In addition, this full moon is referred to as a blood moon because as the moon moves into Earth's shadow, it will have an eerie reddish glow due to the light refracting from Earth's atmosphere. The super blood moon is attracting extra attention because it's the fourth blood moon in a row, known as a tetrad. The, word, the first one happened on April 15, 2014. The next one, October 8, 2014. The third one, March 20th, 2015. And the one that's starting tonight and moving into tomorrow is the grand finale. <coughs> Blood moon tetrads are extremely rare. According to NASA, a tetrad has only happened once in the last 500 years. Another strange phenomenon is that, according to author Mark Blitz, each one of these blood moons occurs on a Jewish holy day. I have a chart here that shows that the first one took place on Passover, then tabern Feast of Tabernacles, then Passover again, then Feast of Tabernacles. So those of you who are healers, and I know there's plenty of them here, um, you know that eclipses offer great significance energetically, right? Mm -hmm. Eclipses often signal turning points. It's where darkness and light merge. And you might notice events speeding up or slowing down in your life. You might see your beliefs, behaviors, or perspectives shift too. Perhaps you even experience a death and rebirth of deep-seated patterns. So in closing, have you noticed that I've referenced multiple calendars today? The Gregorian calendar, the Hebrew calendar, the astrological calendar. Surprisingly, not the Mayan calendar, right? <laughs> so it seems fitting, therefore, to end with one more. How about the Chinese astrology calendar? The Chinese New Year on February 8, 2016, heralds the year of the fire monkey. There is no archetype more captivating and impressive than this fire monkey. Aggressive and assertive, courageous and daring, the fire monkey knows no fear. All of us would bode well 
to contemplate further on the fire monkey's energy. He embodies the ideal revolutionary spirit to com competently handle any potential changes to life as we know it. I'd like to leave you with one more thought. Remember Andrew Grove, the CEO, former CEO of Intel? Well, he and I have something in common. He's a silver lining person too. Mm -hmm. He argues that the greatest improvements and the most monumental innovations are spawned from st strategic inflection points. Therefore, he doesn't encourage people to fear strategic inflection points, but instead learn from them and open to the opportunities that might arise because of them. And as he reminds us in his book, the lesson is we all need to expose ourselves to the winds of change. Thank you.